Welcome back to another edition of... Where we bring you only the finest of vintage test instruments of days gone by. Today in the Retro Tech Spotlight, we have the 21st Century Triplet. Yes, the Triplet 2101. Oh, isn't it nice? It's not the first triplet to show up on Retro Tech, but if you recall, the Triplet Corporation was founded way back in 1904 in Bluffton, Ohio, by none other than Ray L. Triplet. Here is a good looking classic from 1999, 25 years ago today. Look at that, the Triplet 2101. It has that modern take on digital multimeters that was starting to come into the foray. You had that big, bold selector switch as well, which felt great, actually, especially considering, I mean, 25 years ago, mm, this was a pleasure indeed. Of course, you had some remnants that still, you know, give it its age. We have our temperature inserts over here with that K-type uh, insert. We have our HFE, which funny enough, we still see today as well. Um, but there it is in all of its HFE glory. If you take a close look at that capacitance range, what do you notice? It's not much of a range from four nanofarad to 400 nanofarad. Oh, wow. As were many digital multimeters 25 plus years ago, this one also was made in Korea. Another cool feature is the fact that this is actually just a new multimeter. It's never been used. Look at that. We still have that wrapped serial cable. And we have the original 9 volt battery. Oh my. Temperature thermocouple. The K. What are we got here? Oh, look at that. I never noticed this before. But it's a thermocouple. And you've also got these uh, crocodile clips attached to it. So, uh, hey, that's kind of cool. And yes, last but not least those gorgeous old test leads. And some more crocodile style clips. So lots of goodies for your multimeter fun. Hey, no manual in this meter. I don't know if it shipped with one. I'm gonna assume it did, but uh, yeah, it wasn't in the box. Go figure. So it had a lot of features on it um, for the 21st century series, the digital multimeter with a PC interface. Uh, <laughs> PC interface for both Windows and MS-DOS, go figure. Did all the good stuff, capacitance, resistance, uh, inductance as well, but that was on the 2103 model. Um, this model, the 2101, was sort of the basic one. It does have logic test, apparently. Um, analog bar graph and everything else. This was not a true RMS version that started on the 2102 series, but hey, you know what? Yeah, here is the original box that also shipped in. Look at that. They're really hyping up that 21st century because, hey, it was turning into the new millennium 2000. And, uh, you know, that was a big marketing ploy back then, obviously. Cat 4, 600 volts, PC interface, and look at that. Yeah, apparently it did come with an instruction manual as well. So, oh, I wish I would have had that. But, uh, yeah, instruction manual right there. Um, cool. And, of course, came with that incredible three-year warranty, which, you know what? Pretty cool. Uh, you think about today's meters, uh, if you get one year, you're lucky. So three years, because back then, they kind of put their money where their mouth was. More of the features, PC interface for both Windows and MS-DOS. Oh, do you remember DOS? Disk operating system, yes. Resistance, transistor test, inductance, that was a different model. Wattage, uh, logic, uh, except the 2101, which is this model. So yeah, this was the basic model uh, the other series 2102 3 and 5 so you can tell they had a bit more sizzle going on including the true rms which this one did not have 
Something that was kind of neat was the fact that this actually had that third-party agency approval. Uh, CETUV, uh, GS, uh, CAT2, and uh, yeah, CAT1, CAT2, 600 volts. So, um, hey, this was safety certified 25 plus years ago. And the test leads here, really sharp. They have those threaded sides so you could screw on several options if you wanted. But uh, yeah, nice, nice test leads. Alrighty, I'm gonna fire up the uh, Windows 95 machine and let's load this software, <laughs> not. Oh, I wish I had a Windows 95 machine. Um, Darn it. I cannot locate my floppy to USB uh, device. I really wanted to see if this would work with the uh, uh, with the software. Anyway, you know what? Maybe I'll throw that one up on the website if I can find it. 25 years later, and look at that 5.00 volts, spot on. That RS-232 port was discreetly tucked away at the top, hidden by a nice insert. Wow, picture is worth a thousand words, is it not? I just love looking at the inside of these oldies. Check it out. Yeah, do you see that? I'm sure you do. Metex. Yeah, so in reality, this triplet is a Metex ME32 rebrand. Oh, yeah. Now we'll take a closer look at all those goodies in a second. I just want to start off with the exterior. And look at that, look at those brass inserts deep in those screw wells, four of them to be exact. Excellent, and once again, Metex at the bottom of the housing. So we definitely know what we're getting here. Reverse side of the meter as well, look at that shielding. Gorgeous, throughout the whole length of the meter. Just a nice insert here for the buzzer or piezo. 250 volt, 0.8 amp, 800 milliamp fuse. And once again, that gorgeous shielding. Start with that current shunt. That is a massive current shunt with lots of notches. Look at that, oh, fantastico. We've got not one, but two PTCs in total on the main board. And those uh, inserts for the soldering jacks are very nicely done. Look at that huge yellow selector switch. Oh man, I love it. Main IC, a course Metex, 97ME32, made in Japan, even though this Korean multimeter is made in Korea. But uh, there you go, so the main IC made in Japan, the 97ME32. Another PTC that's hiding over there, a transistor tester as well. Boy, that is in there really well. Look at this quality soldering going on back in 1999, 25 years ago. Beauty. High current fuse here is a 15 amp, 250 volt fuse. Now that's a little interesting because on the front of the meter it does say it has a 20 amp rating, but they are giving us only a 15 amp fuse. Now let's turn it around, shall we? On the other side. And there we are, there's our hidden 250 volt, 800 milliamp, low current fuse. And you can see those uh, jacks as well, look at the quality quality soldering going on with those inserts beautiful there's our 9 volt connector as well and with that 9 volt connector comes one of those plastic 9 volt housing just flips uh, fits right over the battery so in case it ever did leak it's going to protect your pcb from uh, undue damage so nice attention to detail once again there, of course, is the RS-232 port, and once again, ME-32F 9949. So I believe that means it is a fabricated in 1999 uh, in April. All in all, really nice. Nothing funky going on here. This is a quality piece of PCB. We have that insulated housing for the battery just because this here is right underneath the high current fuse so it could get rather toasty and uh, metex or triplet didn't want that to happen by the way there's that grounding spring as well and uh, hopefully this look you get a good idea of the uh, attention to detail here looking good nice soldering all around beauty I have to say it is funny though, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a, a board that's labeled, in this case, the triplet 2101, but when you turn it around, there is Metex. I mean, it's like interesting how they left the Metex logo on that triplet housing. Anyway, 
That liquid crystal digital display held up really nicely after a quarter of a century. Still crisp and clean. Hey, no caffeine. As always, this has been a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for taking the trip down vintage memory lane. You, me, and the triplet. 2101.